Yes, yeah, so I just thought I'd point this out. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 379. Uh, each week we meet here to answer the questions asked on the uh, SEO Questions community on Google+. Plus. Oh, no, it's not. That's come from a long way back. The uh, <laughs> Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us tonight, we have Tim Capper. Tim is uh, CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. Uh, he's a, a specialist uh, SEO, resides in Corby, north of uh, London by about 100 miles. And um, he's also a Google product expert on the Google My Business community. Also with us, David Rosam is a leading internet uh, marketer. Um, he's based in West Sussex in the sunny south of the UK. All right, uh, let's get to cracking with our first question. Um, let me see. It's got a quick, this one, that's it. All right, Rodrigo Bueno asked the question, what type of links do you focus your backlinking efforts on for local SEO? Full colon, mainly what type of links do you focus your backlinking efforts on? Um, natural ones. Yeah, 100%. We've had the... I'm sorry. Rodrigo, but if you like look at, and I'm not taking a piss, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, De La, De La Comasi, link insertion, uh, guest posts, local citations, yes, you know, if they are a local business. Um, you know, look, so the first thing is if you are asking, like what to focus your efforts on in terms of a backlink. Um, I, I wouldn't even go down this road, right? I would focus your efforts on, um, you know, content on your site, your site as a whole, the design, the make make it that people want to link to it. I mean, it's, you know, just, make or provide something that people want to link to. And, you know, on the flip side of it, you know, if you guest posts, like why spend time and effort creating content for another site? It just, it just makes no logical sense. Create the effort, create the content and put it on your site. I honestly haven't, how long, how, when 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 did um when did penguin first land about 2011 something like that yeah yeah possibly yeah ten, 10 years at least yeah about 10 years yeah i mean hand on heart i have never i have not built a link or looked for a link in like 10 years now <clears throat> you haven't worked in 10 years <laughs> I <get it. laughs> yeah but this is the, this is the thing i haven't i haven't built a link in 10 years and the irony is is that you know all my all my client sites you know yes it takes a bit of time but they all win in the end and that is just through working on the site content um of course, if they're a local business, yes, you do go out and look at local citations. You do look at um, any relationships they have within the local community that you can you can leverage. Um, but in but but that is pretty much as far as it gets. The rest the rest is you, you build a brand, and and people come to you asking you for stuff, rather than the other way around. Yeah, thank you, Tim. That's um, that's spot on, I think. Anything to add to that, David? 
No. Um, oh, I realise my, uh, my microphone was on. I hope I wasn't muttering anything in the background. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it would have it would have been positive. It would have been yes. I I agree with Tim. Um, the only thing, um, does anybody recall? I mean, didn't Google give a uh, um, a guide uh, issue a guidance on um, a guest posts? Not 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 that long ago either, was it? It was maybe so, no, well, no. Link links aren't links aren't bad. I mean, if you do a guest post, you can you can still go and pay for links, pay for editorials. There there isn't a problem with Google and that. Google only wants you to accurately reflect what type of link it is. So in the old days, if it was paid for, there's no problem. Just put a no follow on to it. Now they've got rel sponsored, rel. UGC and REL uh, um, community created or some, something like that. I can't remember. Um, there's no problem with Google and links. You can go buy them. You can go freaking do whatever you want with them. Um, you can do editorials. You can do whatever as long as you correctly attribute that link. Because if you don't, then you go into the problem where Google goes, okay, yeah, no, sorry, but you're trying to manipulate, yeah. And yeah, I, th I think that the, the thing is that there's quite often a um, people muddle in their mind um, SEO and marketing the site, marketing yeah. their business. And SEO is only part of marketing their site, marketing, marketing their business. Um, it's organic search, it's ranking on the search engines. Now, there's lots of other ways you can get people to come to your site. Um, and if you pay for those links, you get people coming to your site, that's fine, but it's it's not going to help you with ranking higher in, in natural search. You know, that that's it. You know, your links, um, your backlinking efforts are to do with some some idea of manipulating the the serps i feel um and that's that's a losing game but as tim says you can you can build links for other reasons and you can get you can get uh, business you can get people come to your site and get business from them that's fine but where the where the thinking goes wrong is the idea that you can manipulate Google search results. Thank you, David. All right, let's uh, call that a wrap for Rodrigo and Dila Gomesi. Gomez, Gomezzi. All right, um, Amanda Lewinsky said how uh, the question is titled "How do I turn off." the old site without impacting search engine optimization. Um, <clears throat> Amanda said, hi, here's a dumb SEO question. I moved my site to a new domain, brackets, exact copy. How do I turn off the old one without impacting search engine optimization? How do I tell Google it has moved? How do I redirect all traffic to the new site and close the old? Uh, please be gentle. I'm not a geeky person. Well, Amanda, you're probably going to need to find a geeky person to do this for you. Um, you're more than likely going to need uh, a geeky person to do this for you. If this is an exact copy and you did not change a single URL on site, then you need to find a geeky person to do a wildcard redirect for you. Um, which basically means uh, domain, you know, URL A redirects to the new URL A. New, new old URL B redirects to uh, new URL B. Um, 
If you are using, I don't know, WordPress, there are probably some, I don't know, but there may be a plugin that will help you do that. Um, but, but yeah, and that's assuming it's the same. Um, if it's slightly different, if you have made changes on one to the other, then you would need to redirect those individual ones. Um, you can do that in HT access manually in your, you know, in your, in your, in your new site, obviously also in the old, uh, sorry, the old to the new. Um, it all depends on how you did it. But I would say just to make sure that it's done properly, go and find yourself a geeky person. Excellent. Thank you, Tim. All of what Tim said. And once you have all that in place, I still wouldn't take your old site down. Um, leave it there. It won't cost you very much. And as the discussion goes on further, if you, you know, you've got the, the problem of if you do take it down, even to to Google's hints that you leave it there for, for six months or, or 12 months. Um, other members of the, uh, uh, of the dumb SEO question um, um, site um, uh, on, on, uh, on Facebook are saying that they've had, um, they've had problems with um, taking down sites and rankings and traffic dropping um, it doesn't cost you much to keep that old domain and perhaps a hosting in place it's you know it's a few quid a few dollars whatever wherever you are um yeah and, it's, and, it's, and it is only yeah and it is only every other year every couple of years <laughs> definitely don't if you've had a site on a domain don't get rid of it because I mean it's the easiest way for like I mean you know one of these things domain harvesting in the sense that um, you go and find you go and someone's someone's ex got an expired domain um, the domain is on Wayback Machine you just basically export the entire thing back into the old site and voila you've got an old site up and running exactly on the same domain um, yeah, and and it could be then you're effectively your competitor. Don't don't let it expire. Excellent, Tim. All right, let's move along to number three on our run list from Kunjal Chohan. Um, it's titled "Implementing a Subdirectory Path for Different Countries." Um, Kunjal said uh, in. International SEO, when we implement subdirectory paths for different countries, for example, uh, .com slash au, um, .com slash sea, and .com slash eu. Uh, and having the multinational website as .com. So to grow organic traffic for subdirectory paths, do we build links on all of the uh, subdirectory paths or does the uh, root domain, um, uh, i.e. .com, transfer authority to subdirectory paths? I mean, how do we go about ranking the website in all respective countries? So you would do it exactly the same as you did on, 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 on your main one. So, so your, you know, all your different ones are going to, are, are going to, it's essentially you've created language pages um, for whatever those languages are across, across the site. So essentially you've just mirrored the site, but in different languages. Okay. So what you do with one is you're going to do with the other. So if you created a piece of content in, in, in English that said, I don't know. Ten ways, ten ways to ride a, a fluffy elephant. Then that that piece of content is going to be, you know, translated into the other languages. And when you internally link, 
you know, the reason, Tim, you know, you're going to internally link that article to your fluffy elephant page. Well, that article that's translated in the other language is going to internally link to that language's internal fluffy elephant page. And so you're going to be building and as you as you mirror and as you go, you're going to be building internal links anyway to these. Plus your content that you're creating is going to be create, you know, with within these. Now you you would also I would I would also still in a sense if you create a country specific um piece of content you may not want to translate that into the other languages because um let's say it is it's complete specific to that country that no one else would i don't know let's say um stockists for fluffy elephants in romania like the, the 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 russian version of your site wouldn't wouldn't like you know it, it it wouldn't be relevant to them or the the australian version because um or oh man, it could be but i'm just saying something that's totally local that the other language versions well you wouldn't need to create another one but so you are then marketing that language version itself in in, in itself so what i'm trying to say is it's not it's no different to having one version or your internal linking is to a, your you know your your content that you create is all going to internally link within that language version and you can still also go and create more specific versions or content specific to that uh language country region etc uh, that doesn't get translated because it's more localized and therefore you would be driving you know more stuff towards that particular country or language so yeah it doesn't really change Just don't, don't like don't let the multi languages sort of muddy the waters it's exactly the same as with one language but you're actually now you know have more to 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 to, to work through thank you Tim it's just a couple of things to say which is you if you haven't done you should have hreflang set up for this for this site um and tim talked about internal links and that's absolutely right i hope that we're not talking about building external links to subdirectory paths as we said earlier um it's if you're trying to build links to manipulate search uh, results, it ain't gonna work. Thank you, David. Okay, let's rock on to number four. Um, it's called, it's titled Contact Point Schema. Shayo Chi Lo. Um, said, I found a lot of websites use contact point schema on their home pages to specify all different contact points, even though there is no equivalent on page elephant elements. <laughs> what is the uh, <laughs> those fluffy pages again? <laughs> yeah. What is the uh, function of contact point schema uh, from Google's point of view? Uh, is it beneficial to show the right contact information for users uh, throughout the world? Um, example, HTTPS, uh, full colon, slash, slash, www.8.hp.com, slash, us, slash, en, slash, home, dot, html. Um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to duck out on actually um, cutting and pasting the HP um, URL. Um, surely this is part of uh, organization schema, is it not? Um, so it should just, Google should interpret it as part of organizational schema. Um, I'm not sure it's something I've done though. 
Uh, maybe I, I should. Talk I think there's. I think they've got multiple offices, um, and they've like. I think the multiple offices maybe, but they've literally listed the contact point for like the ten, ten offices around the world. I don't know, like. To me, that wouldn't necessarily make sense to have it running across site um, because you already said it's not on page. It would make sense to have it on the actual contact one where they can select which country or office, you know, location they want to contact because I'm assuming it's on that page. Mm. Yeah, so it, it's, yes, what, what I think what the, we're saying <laughs> to correct me if I'm wrong, Tim, is is that the it shouldn't be the same. Your your organisational schema shouldn't be the same across the site. The organisational schema should be set up to make sense for the section of the site that it's it's on. So your contact point should be correct for your us part of the site and your yeah. um and it w when it's when it's for china you should have the contact information for china i think yeah what do other people say Let's see if anyone's come up with the answer of this for this. I was, I was just having a quick look. Um, <laughs> can't go past this uh, question without uh, thanking people like Michael Martin who yeah. uh, devote uh, countless hours to making uh, Damasio questions such a, a marvellous resource. All right, let's um, move on to the next. Yeah. Another one from Shea. Um, he asks uh, how to optimize for people searching for a section in the knowledge graph. Um, or conversely, is it possible to optimize for it? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure, but um, well, Michael says that kind of, you know, you can optimize for the query that people were searching for, certainly, and, and you know, we do that all the time. Uh, as for other bits in it, well, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, um, I'm I'm having trouble actually visualizing what people are doing searching for a section in the knowledge graph. Am I being dense here, or you know, people search? So I'm, guess, I'm guessing in your knowledge graph, it would be like let's say it was a company. Hmm. Um. Oh, well, mind you, he says specific people section. For which section? Yeah, P people search for what they search for. <laughs> and we need to produce content that matches what people search for. Or we've got to go out and in impregnate their brains with ideas through PR or social media or whatever to make them search for something else but they search for what they search for and you need to think about what they search for and research what they search for um i i'm yeah and as i say i'm just i'm just struggling a bit with it, the idea that because the knowledge graph comes from what people search for so it's a kind of one step away yeah. and also entities so this yeah it depends on what the actual search was for in the first instance 
because you have different types of knowledge graphs you know in the in the way they displayed so you know you can have different variations um different entities that uh, can be split into people uh businesses uh, a whole different varieties you can't like yeah uh, <laughs> it's a bit of an odd question it is a bit of an odd question just think about what people search for and find out what people search for and create content that is suggested by that Not so much odd. Uh, he's a seeker of perfection. Um, <laughs> oh, that is very odd. <laughs> Here's another one from Shea. JavaScript inserted structured data makeup, markup. Uh, he said, we know that Google will work with JavaScript inserted structured data make markup. Uh, but how about automated um, Google Merchant Center feeds? Do they work with um javascript inserted markup um, or do we need to hard code it in the source code let me know your thoughts or experiences <coughs> well with your merchant center feed um it is normally going to be with javascript because um that product could change quite often it be in stock, out of stock, color, size, um, reviews, comments. So it's that it, you know, product is normally uh, JavaScript. It's it's you know, unless that product is absolutely completely static, like always going to be there, always in stock, never going to change, never no purchasing options on it then I guess you could just chuck it in, you know. Um, but nine times out of 10, it's JavaScript. Um, um, controlled. Thank you, Tim. Okay, uh, let me just check this. Yes, that's the six questions asked and answered uh, tonight. We've done it again. We've answered uh, all of the questions asked uh, in in the dumb SEO questions Facebook group. We'll be back uh, at the same time next week uh, to do this all again. But before I go, I must thank people like Michael Martinez, uh, um, Brenda Michelin, um, Ammon Johns. Uh, um, Oh, all, all the people, that I, and there's just so many I'm forgetting, people who answer questions on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group uh, through the week. And especially I must thank uh, Tim Kappa and uh, David Rosam for, for uh, uh, your contributions, which make uh, uh, our work uh, so valuable. For putting up with you for the last five years. <laughs> five years? Ten years. No, oh, it'd be easy ten. You lost five easy years. Easy ten, man. Yeah. Easy ten. Every third. I see you more than I had a wife, mate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what about <laughs> that? What about that? Speaking of wives. Yeah, there's a wife. Hey, Sam. Hi. <laughs> you all right? You well, all right? What, what are you giving him to drink there, Sam? Oh, it's only orange squash. What's happened to the vodka? We haven't got any. Oh, did we finish it? Yeah, we haven't got any gin either. Oh. Oh, you best get shopping. <laughs> <laughs> We're going on a wine walk later. Are we? Yeah. A wine walk? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm just trying to find a fabulous doggy place, walking place. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Okay. So
Well, look, I, I, I think I, I could probably turn this off. Oh, yes, that's all, that's all going out, isn't it? 